if we don't have this part. This right here can be solved by letting a n equals r to the nth power, and we just proceed. And don't worry, this will come out later on, right? The, the whole thing right now is just like, okay, just trust me on that, that's solvable. Well, if we don't have this part, in fact, this is also solvable. If a n is equal to a n minus 1 times a n minus 2 only, then we can actually turn the product into a sum by taking a logarithm. Then that will be doable and we can turn that into a linear situation. So that's the idea. So now, here is the deal. Either we try to get rid of this part or we try to get rid of this part. So up to you. And let me tell you, it's much easier to somehow get rid of this part first by doing the following. And here is how we can start. Let's go ahead and let another sequence, I'll just code that to be bn. Let's say this right here is equal to a n plus 1. And of course, this is equivalent to say a n equals b n and then minus 1. And you will see, if we do the substitution right here, we have b n minus 1 that's equal to. Here, a n minus 1, this is a subscript, so I just have to put this right here. So we get b sub n minus 1 and then minus 1. And we continue, plus b sub n minus 2 and then minus 1. And then for this, we will have to add parentheses. This right here is b sub n minus 1 and then minus 1. And then we continue. We multiply by b sub n minus 2 and then minus 1. Now, you see that here we have a binomial times a binomial. And the best part is that you see this times this, of course, we still have the b n minus 1 times b n minus 2. But this times this, we get minus b n minus 1, yeah? And then this times this, minus b sub n minus 2, and lastly, we just have to add 1. And now here's the best part of this move, because you see that this can be cancelled out with that. Likewise, this can be cancelled out with that. And if you would like to do more, sure, negative 1 plus 1, they are on the same side, cancelled out, of course. And if you want more, of course, here you have the minus 1, here you also have the minus 1, they are on both sides, right? You can cancel them out as well. So in the end, you actually just end up with bn, and uh, that's equal to this times that on the right-hand side only, right? So bn equals b sub n minus 1 times b sub n minus 2. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have a product of this and that. We can actually change this into a linear situation by taking a logarithm. In calculus, we like to take the natural log, and that's what I did in the previous video. And the problem with that is that the initial condition, once we get to the next sequence, it, it's not nice anymore. So that's why I changed the numbers. But in fact, I saw your comment. Thank you so much. I noticed as well, if we don't take a natural log, we just have to think about it, and we can still end up with nice numbers because everything is whole number in the original sequence, Life doesn't have to be that hard. Check this out. A1 is equal to 1. That will imply B1 is equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. Likewise, B2 will also be 2. So it's a much better idea if we take not, uh, not a natural log, but rather log base 2 on both sides. Again, if you take the natural log, then it will be really hard to solve for. It's really like tedious to solve the constant and doesn't look nice, but log base 2 is much better. Here we have log base 2 of bn, and that's equal to, of course, this is log base 2 of bn minus 1, and then we add log base 2 of bn minus 2, like this. And now, let's do another substitution. I'm going to call this to be cn, which is log base 2 of bn. And of course, b1 is 2. Log base 2 of 2 is 1. Very nice. Well, have a look. If this is cn, then what's this? This right here is just nicely equal to cn minus 1. Because I just have to change the subscript, right? Similarly, right here, this is just going to be cn minus 2. And hey, I think we know this guy really, really well. Much better yet. Well, again, C1 will be log base 2 of 2, which is 1. And C2 is log base 2 of 2 as well. So we actually end up with a Fibonacci sequence for the Cn, right? 
So now I will show you guys how to solve this from scratch. Have a look. Linear situation now. Proceed by letting cn equals r to the nth power. And you will see that here on the left hand side, we get r to the nth power. And that's equal to here we get r to the n minus 1. Because again, just do the subscript right here. Plugging. Likewise, we add r to the n minus 2. Now, everybody here has r to the nth power. So I'm going to just divide it out. r cannot be 0, otherwise we are not doing any math right here, actually. <laughs> so r cannot be 0. We can legitimately divide everybody by r to the nth power. And then in the meantime, I will actually just multiply everybody by r squared. So you see, r squared here divided by r to the n, right? When we do that, here we'll just get r squared. And then here we'll get r to the first power, but bring that to the other side, so it's minus r. Here we just get 1, so to bring that to the other side, we just have minus 1, and that's going to be 0. And then of course, let's go ahead and solve for this by using the quadratic formula. r is equal to b, right here is negative 1, negative b will be positive 1, and plus minus square root of negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times this times negative 1, which becomes just a 4, and inside we'll just get 5, and then all over 2 times that, which is 2. Yes, this right here is our golden ratio, and it's uh, brother, 1 minus, right? <laughs> All right, so here's the idea. You might be wondering, should we take the positive version or should we take the negative version? The answer to that is we do both. Because this right here is the second order difference equation. Sometimes it's also called difference equation, right? For this um, recurrence relation. You take both. And now, because of this, you actually know that cn is in the form of the following. We have r to the nth power. The first r is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, namely the golden ratio, to the nth power. And then we have the second part, which is 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 raised to the nth power, like this. But this and that are just our building blocks, all right? To actually form the general solution for cn, we actually have to multiply by a constant here and a constant here, and we add them up. Just like how you solve a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficient. Well, I'm not going to put on c1 and c2 because we have that already, so I'm actually going to use alpha and beta. Right? Okay, that's the idea. Now, with our initial condition here, we can, of course, set up system equation, and then we can actually figure out the alpha and beta. But here's a little trick. You see that we have c1 is 1, c2 is 1. If you plug in, that's okay. But if you put the n to be 2 right here, and here, the math is not so nice. We can move back a little bit. Because we know to get to the next term, just add the two previous terms. So to get to the previous term, we can just look at c0. What plus 1 would be 1? Of course, 0. So we can actually use this right here, right? So when n is equal to 0, the output will be 0. So we have 0 equals, and this is just going to be alpha. Put a 0 here, that will be 1. So we just have alpha. And then we add beta times this will just be 1. So we have that. And then next, we use this, of course, easier. Put the n to be 1 right here and right here, and the output will be 1, so we have 1. That's equal to alpha times the golden ratio, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the first power. And then we add beta times this, the golden ratio's little brother to the first power, like that. And we have a system of equation. Have a look. Right here, I'm just going to multiply this first equation by the negative of that, so we can do elimination. And then, because we know alpha plus beta is equal to zero, which implies they have opposite sign, alpha will be the positive version of that. So we have alpha equals positive one over square root of five. And then, right here, you can just go ahead and plug in the numbers. And that's pretty much it for CN. So let me just go ahead and do that for you guys. All right, now, of course, we just have to go back, go back, right? As you know, cn is log base 2 of bn. 
So I will just write down log base 2 of bn. And then, what's bn? bn is just an plus 1. So we can also say this is log base 2 of an plus 1, like that, right? So finally, I will demonstrate this right here for you guys. Well, of course, to get an by itself, we can just do 2 to the power on both sides and then minus 1 on both sides. So ladies and gentlemen, the explicit formula for the original like extreme Fibonacci sequence is the following. An equals 2 to this power. So I just put on 2 for the base and then 1 over square root of 5 times the golden ratio and then to the nth power and then minus 1 over square root of 5 times the golden ratio little brother and then to the nth power and then minus 1 after that. Woo! Man, 